but your heart rate increases, perspiration increases, and your cognition, actually your awareness increases, but also things are shut down. So digestion is shut down because it takes too long. So it takes about four hours for us to digest a meal. Um, so again, that can lead to symptoms of compromised digestion. Your reproductive health is shut down. Again, I can ovulate later. It takes an awful lot of energy for me to ovulate to release blood as well. So again, I can do that later. Tissue repair is shut down. So that ability to heal wounds, to repair um, arterial function, whatever that is, that is shut down and compromised. So you can understand, and that's, and that's fantastic. It's really, really adaptive. Yeah. But when you come over here then to the um, rest and digest or the parasympathetic version of that, you switch it off all as well. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But what happens in today's society is that we very rarely turn that off. We live in this predominantly, I need to get it done, I need to get it done, I need to get it done. And that's what's happening all of the time. So for example, an example in modern day would be, you know, um, I know not many people are back in their offices in terms of COVID and things like that, but you know, you would have been running to the petrol station, for example, to grab a to grab a sandwich and then you would be on your way back, you'd be eating it on the go and you'd be maybe taking a call from <laughs> all the time, all the time, sitting eating it in the car. Um, so what the result is you're not actually giving your body time to, you know, to stop. Yeah. Um, and you're just kind of doing all of these things. So that's what's happening physiologically. So when you're in that state, most of the time, you're then you're then um, exhausting the stress response. And that's when chronic inflammation can happen in body, um, not just this acute inflammatory, it's this chronic, like, drug. always there, just like always almost your body's used to it. It's nor it's the norm, the normal. It's the norm. Exactly. Okay. That's so interesting, Warda, because, um, when it comes to diet and nutrition, as you and I both know, like, and most of the people in this course will know as well, there's loads of books out there. There's loads of advice out there and it's all really good information. But what can happen is, and what's happened to me is if I start thinking I have to do all of that, like, you know, change my whole diet overnight, that's, a, I have a stress response in my body. And I love that way that you work in that integrative way of like understanding the psychology and the effect that has on the body. It's not about changing your whole diet over night time is it it's really about doing it in a way that where you can do it from a place of feeling quite calm small steps yes yes okay. well a hundred percent because these things have to be sustainable yeah so, um but it also what i would also say into that as well is it very much depends on what you're trying to achieve okay. um because predominantly when people are trying to um change their diet or improve their health they automatically think about weight they automatically think about uh, like, in your world in least. my world yeah, yeah, in yeah. my world yeah. they automatically want to either lose weight they want to you know change something but usually it's about weight so what i want to try and tell people is that your health is so much more than your waistline Mm. so much more so it's looking at your levels of anxiety you're looking at your period um every month um do you struggle with amenorrhea do you struggle with um you know uh, um, irregular periods they're not or really really heavy periods so again looking at what's kind of happening in your body all of the time and taking track of that and then look at ways that you can try and improve those but whatever's the whatever's crying the loudest in terms of a symptom that's what you kind of look at and try to address first yeah and that's the thing is i've seen that a lot in um women's health when it comes to diet is you know obviously there's a huge diet culture out there in the in the mainstream world and the problem with that is, is that that diet, that kind of like um, fasting diet, dieting kind of crash diets, they really compromise the endocrine system from what I've seen, don't they? Because the blood yes. sugar level is going up and down all the time. And then that then has, because what you said about the nervous system, it, it has a negative impact on the reproductive system and then can cause problems with, with, with um, either fertility, ovulation, or even how, the menstru how periods are manifesting. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's really, really important because hormones are hormones are so, so important. And you will hear like hormone balancing and hormone imbalances and things like that. And, you know, I suppose it's important to maybe look at, you know, there's there's hormones are usually classified into three various different types. So you have amines, you have your protein peptides, and then you have your steroid hormones. So again, they come from cholesterol. So it's it's really, really looking at the interplay between our diet, our environment, and our stressors 
really in terms of balancing out these hormones and making sure that they are they're functioning correctly so for example within diet it's really looking at you know putting in the right food so if your um, steroid hormones for example they're derived from cholesterol if you're not getting any fat into your diet and a lot of times females in terms of these crash dieting and in terms of like you know mainstream big pop diets um, or popular diets they they avoid fat at all cost but if you are, are not manufacturing cholesterol if you're not if you're not giving yourself the raw materials to make cholesterol to make hormones there's going to be an imbalance there you're not manufacturing these things correctly so it's yeah so it's really important you have the raw materials to help yourself to make these things that's why like fat is such an important macronutrient for females especially because number one it fat is the the um it's the outer layer of all cells so the lipid layer is the outer layer of all cells so in terms of that replication of cells as well fat is hugely necessary but as well from a hormone perspective and from a carrying life perspective um, fat is just so, so important. So that's something that I always try and um, bring to the attention of females as well when they're changing their diet or they're looking to change their diet is to yeah. not think about fat as a demon and not think about it as the enemy, to think about fat. I and mean, there are, obviously there's bad fats as well. well you you know, there's trans fats and things like that but thinking about all of these good fats so um you know thinking about avocados thinking about salmon thinking about you know chia seeds flax seeds walnuts um mackerel all of these various different things if you can get them into your diet um olive oils you know there's loads of plant and animal bases so you, you so you're covered but it, it's really important that we do get them in um okay so just to reiterate that fasts in simple language we need fats to make hormones. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, absolutely.